I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Steve Wright, who is a kindergarten teacher in the River Delta Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. So tell us about your school. Where, where do you teach? I teach in Isleton, California, uh, which is on the Sacramento Delta. Uh, it's a small school. There's one kindergarten, one first grade, all the way up to sixth grade. Um, we have a population of about 200 students. Um, lovely, comfortable campus. Tell us about your student population and the makeup. Um, we are, I guess I would say our school is about 50-50, 50, 50, 50 um, English language learners um, and 50% um, English only speakers and it's a low socioeconomic uh, school. Um, about 95% of all the students are on free and reduced lunch and so um, it's a uh, it's a small, uh, close-knit community, but uh, a lot of people out of work, a lot of people still struggling right now. So half of your students are, are English learners, and many of them don't have preschool or haven't gone to preschool, so they're coming to your class for the first time. Actually, you know, I, I want to, you know, a lot of them actually have gone to preschool. It's a new program that our district has partnered with First Five, and so they've been providing preschool for all those students. So actually... What's the impact been? A huge impact. Really? Huge impact. So I mean, I would say last year is one of the first times in next, this coming up school year is my 28th year teaching, but last year was one of the first times that about 90% of all of my students had been to preschool. And so a huge difference versus the other years when they had not been to preschool. So yeah. So explain the value of preschool, especially for an English learner. Well, uh, first, one of the most important things is the students are comfortable with going to school. Mm -hmm. And they understand that these bells mean it's time to go to recess or it's time to eat or we do this and we move from the carpet to our seats and this is how I sit in my seat and this is how I sit on the carpet. Um, in addition to that, they get a lot of time being able to hear those academic conversations. And when I talk about academic conversations, it's a different conversation than you would have at your home. Your home, you're just talking about social things or what's on television. An academic conversation is centered around that vocabulary from that story we read or the meaning of this word. And they're starting to use that vocabulary. And so when they come in and they have those opportunities, suddenly they're use of the English language has just gone from here to here. And so that makes a big difference. So students. they have confidence coming into your classroom because they've had that preschool. Right, exactly. And so, and so this, what kind of a head start does that give them? Oh, a huge head start. I mean, they come to, in the past when students hadn't been to preschool, they don't really understand what a number means, how to count. They don't know any of their letter names or sounds. Now that they have been to preschool, they come knowing how to count to 10, um, and they know about 50% of their letters. So it's a, it's a big difference. So what are some of the challenges that you face uh, as a teacher? You know, you, you talked about your school community being 90% um, uh, free and reduced lunch, mm -hmm, correct? Mm -hmm. What kind of challenges do you face as a result of that? Um, I, I think one of the biggest challenges is making sure that I take the time to educate uh, the parents on what happens in school and why do I do the things that I do and why is it important that they learn these things and the stepping stones of what we do going from kindergarten through sixth grade um, involving those parents in our academic parent-teacher um, meetings and getting them to understand these things called standards and what they mean and what they can do at home to help impact their students, not only their academic, but their social um, achievements. So, Do you find it difficult to uh, get some parents to realize how much, um, how important their role is in the child's education and not expecting it just all happen in the classroom? Um, you know, it, that's why we set aside that time to meet with them. I mean, if I don't meet with them, they don't know. I mean, I've always say people know what they know and they don't know what they don't know. And so when you give parents an opportunity to meet with you and talk about those specific things, then and you 
during that time, I make games for them, and I, give, I teach them how to play these games, and they take them home and practice, and then we check the data and see the improvement, and boom, they're, they can't wait to start working with their kids because they see what they've done has helped them. So, Now, you say you've been teaching for, what, 20 years? This, this coming school year will be my 28th year. 28. Yes. So have you always taught kindergarten or what grade levels have you taught? I started 28 years ago. I started teaching kindergarten. I taught kindergarten for five years and then I taught first grade and then I taught a one-two loop, which would mean I'd keep my first graders through the end of second grade. Mm -hmm. And then I taught fourth grade for about 10 so years and um, then I'm back to kindergarten mm -hmm. again. So uh, in all that time there have been a lot of changes in education, obviously. So. What have you seen uh, as far as the value of professional development in helping teachers? I, I don't think I could say how important that is. Um, and when I talk about professional development, it's not just going to a seminar and learning from someone else, but it's about learning from each other. And that can go all the way from students, co teachers coming to me, um, or it could be um, I'm just sitting with a colleague and we're talking about some strategy that I used or we're, they're sharing their ideas. So professional development can go from big down to individualized and probably one of the most powerful and most important things that we can do as educators for each other. What are some of the biggest changes you've seen in 28 years in education? Um, standards, mm -hmm. the big thing. Um, you know, there was the time way back when there were kind of loose ideas of what we wanted to have happen. Um, but with standards came uh, a truckload of assessments and being able to negotiate your way through those assessments and teaching um, others and learning yourself on how can I, how can I manipulate these assessments or create my own to really be able to accomplish or to be able to see what my students are able to do. And so it's really important for you to collaborate with, with teachers, uh, no matter what grade level, uh, just to get ideas. Oh, yeah, it's uh, the most important thing, you know, and I, I've been a, you know, in addition to teaching, I've been a mentor for 19 years, and so, and now I'm the coordinator for the, the district uh, beginning teacher program, and so I've worked with everyone from kindergarten through high school, and so, um, and I always encourage all those teachers that I meet to make sure we talk with each other. Just because you teach uh, high school math doesn't mean that some of the concepts or strategies that you use in your classroom can't be used in first grade or kindergarten. So, and be, But being a mentor, it's reciprocal. I mean, you're not only teaching, but you're learning yourself. Oh, what yeah. are some of the things that you're learning from you know, the, the newer teachers? I think um, one of the things that I learned from all the teachers is how important it is to listen and how important it is to be patient. Um, things don't happen overnight. Um, you have to nurture and mold, mold those things before they really start to blossom. And so being able to listen, um, being able to know when it's time to offer some advice and when it's time to ask a question to get them to reflect deeper. So I mean, now I'm talking more about what I do for the teachers, but uh, if I was gonna say, what, if, what are the things that I've learned? It's, it's those two things, listening and being patient. No, being able to pick those moments when it's time to offer some advice, but really questioning, getting them to reflect. Because in any profession, being able to reflect on what you do is probably the most powerful thing you can do. Sometimes it's painful. But um, being able to reflect is what really helps you grow. So what does it mean for you to be a Teacher of the Year? It's an honor. Um, I, I love where I, I work, and I, um, I'm honored that uh, my colleagues, the people I respect, and the people I've worked with for a long time chose me to represent the district. Um, and I'm one of many outstanding teachers that are um, all going to be, that are walked through your door to talk to you. Um, I can't say, I think collectively we all do things that are incredible. And I, if I have the opportunity to share some of those things with some other people who would like to listen, then I think then I can make even more of an impact. So it's, a, it's exciting and 
exciting time right now. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. We've been speaking with Steve Wright, who is the Teacher of the Year for the River Delta Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.